Okay, everybody, so today is part four of the recycling, upcycling your Starbucks Frappuccino jars and all the fun things we can do with them. And I think that this one is my favorite because I honestly think that I came up with this all on my own. I am a person that is everything mason jars. I love mason jars. If there's something to do with mason jars, I want to do it. And one day I was making soap dispenser out of mason jar and I had bought one of those kits at Joann's to make a soap dispenser and after I had spent like $15 on a soap dispenser I came home and I was sitting there thinking like what the heck I just spent $15 on a mason jar and a kit to make it a soap dispenser and I had already always kind of kept the Starbucks jars and I started thinking, oh my goodness, I could probably do the same thing with the Starbucks jars. And I could probably do it for like way cheaper. Let's think about how I can do this. And so after I thought about it, you saw the picture, that's what I came up with, and these are them. And I love these. These are as inexpensive and shabby chic as you can get. Like. Talk about budget, like crafting on a budget, this is it. The dispenser was my dial cream dispenser. Absolutely love these. If you wanna give these as a gift to somebody, all you have to do is go and treat yourself to a Starbucks Frappuccino or two. So I love this idea. I'm excited to bring it to you. And today we're just gonna do your toothbrush holder and your soap dispenser. And all you need is two jars. You can mix and match them like I did here and make the larger one soap and the smaller one toothbrush. You kind of got to use the smaller one for the toothbrush because otherwise I think your toothbrush is going to get lost in the big one. So today we're going to use two small ones and you need um, some chalk paint. When I say chalk paint, I don't know what other crafters use. I've heard them say chalkboard paint and I have tried it with chalkboard paint and I absolutely hated it. I use the Americana Decor chalk paint. And this, I don't think in all honesty that this is the same thing as chalkboard paint because chalk paint for furniture comes in a huge variety of colors and it's a lot thicker and denser and chalkboard paint to me is a little bit thinner and runnier. So I use black chalk paint to start off with. And then I pick a color. What color do you want your jars to be? And some people use acrylic paint. I personally did not like the acrylic paint because when you go to sand it, and this was just me trial and error and experimenting, and I have experimented with several different paints. When I sanded, the jar to distress it. The acrylic paint came off really easy and then I found myself all the way down to the glass and it didn't look as it didn't look distressed. It really looked like I had just sanded all the paint off down to the glass and I just didn't like it. And so I decided that I would I go to Lowe's all the time with my husband and Lowe's sells these sample colors for $2.98 I think is what they sell them for by Valspar. I absolutely love Valspar paint and they have their color samples. These color samples come out seasonally. So every season they have a whole new color palette at Lowe's and I absolutely love it because I go there, I get really good paint and for a crafter, this is more paint than you're gonna know what to do with with this color. Okay, so today's color that I'm going to use is the Valspar color sample Timber Dust. And that Timber Dust equals this color jar. And I love this color. Love, love, love it. I'm a brown person, an earth tone person anyway. And so this is the color that we are going to use today. You're also going to need some sandpaper. Um, this one is an all-purpose one and so all the different, all four sides are, um, I guess a different coarseness. And I also get like the paper and I get a fine sandpaper, a real fine one because the more coarse it is, you're going to scratch that paint off and it's not going to look distressed. It's going to look scratched and it's going to go all the way down to the glass no matter what kind of paint you use. And 
then you're going to need a piece of plastic to paint on. And let me just tell you one of my tips. You know, you don't want to use paper towel because when you flip it over and you paint it on paper towel, when you pull it up, the paper towel is stuck to it. And that always poses a problem. So, I to use a good old Walmart bag. I cut the bottom off of it and it opens it up nice and flat, just perfect. And who doesn't have a Walmart or a grocery store bag? We all do. We probably have an overabundance of them. So, it works just as good and then you don't feel guilty throwing it away afterwards. So let's get started with painting these jars. So what you're gonna wanna do to, for both of them, put a double coat of the black chalk paint on there. Let the first one dry. When the first one dries, put a second one because the first one's gonna dry and even when it's dried, you can see the lines in it and you don't want it. You want there to be a good thick coat of black so when you're sanding off the color, you don't go through the black too. Okay, so just a tip, when I'm painting these, um, you always want to try and paint in the same direction. Either go side to side or go up and down. And I promise you, later on you're going to see why, because it comes down to when you're sanding. And even if you don't see all the lines in the paint as you're painting it, when you go to sand, it matters. You either have to sand side to side or up and down and I personally like to sand up and down. So um, yeah, go ahead and get started painting these and try to uh, keep it all in one direction. I always start with the top and I do the top first so I can set this down and paint the rest of my jar. I'm going to set this down. I'm going to finish painting it and I'll paint the other one. I'll put a second coat on mine and when you're done with your second coat, come back to this video and we'll get started with the color. And now we are ready to put whatever color you've chosen to cover the black with on and we're going to need about two coats. So if you're using a lighter, thinner paint, you might need a couple more coats than that. But with the Valspar color sample paints, you only need two coats. So get to putting those two coats on and, and I'll see you back here when they're dry and we are ready for the next step. Okay, so it's been a few days since um, I've been back at the craft table to finish up our Starbucks toothbrush and soap dispenser holders because my daughter Kayla is 15 and she is an avid soccer player and so she plays soccer year round and at this time of year, which is April, March, April, May, we have state cup for club soccer and so the last two weekends We've been in San Diego doing state cup and hmm, sadly we made it to the fourth round with single eliminations with eight teams to go and we ended up losing on Sunday so that was kind of sad but anyway so I am home now I'm back ready to finish these so let me show you what we're going to do next with them now that they're going to dry okay so on your Starbucks glasses you're going to see that there's dots along the bottom, there's some numbers, there's I think the ounces are on it and just, and so you're gonna want to make sure to go over those because those always make it look really cool. Okay so what I do is I just take my sandpaper and I lightly start sanding the paint. So do you remember when I told you when you're painting it to try and uh, go one way, either go up or down, up and down, or side to side on with the paint? Well, that's 
that part comes into play right here because when you're sanding, if you're sanding up and down and you paint it side to side, it really doesn't look distressed. It just really makes it look funky and it kind of tears the paint off and it just doesn't look good. So I went up and down with my paint, so I'm gonna sand up and down. If you went side to side, then you're gonna sand side to side. So I'm gonna sand up and down and see how you can see the black starting to come through. And there's some black coming through. And then just find another spot and sand. And then I'm gonna kinda go in a circle on this one just to give it a little patch. When you're distressing it and kind of aging it, you don't want all your sand marks to be the same. Okay, so there. Now we did that little piece. Okay, and then here's some lettering. So we're gonna kind of go over the lettering to make it black. And once you hit the black, you kind of don't want to go too much more because then you're going to hit the glass. And here's all the dots. Go lightly over those dots. That makes it look really cool, I think. And then, and then what I like to do on the bottom, like right along this edge here, I like to take the sandpaper and just kind of go all the way around it. And have some of the black underneath show. On the less coarse side, I think. And then look, there you go. It looks pretty distressed down there. So just go ahead and finish the rest of your jar, sanding it, uh, both your jars. And when I'm done doing that, I'll get back to you and show you what step we're gonna do next. Okay, so we are back and we are done sanding and distressing our jars. And they look adorable and they are just about ready for sealing. Take some soap and water and just lightly wash them off and rinse them off to get all that extra dust off from sanding them and distressing them before you seal them. And when I seal mine, I like to use the Mod Podge sealer. If you have a sealer that you prefer, that you like, that'll work, perfect, use it. This is just what I happen to use. So what I also did after I was done sealing it was, um, I use the Rust-Oleum Oil Rubbed Bronze for the spouts and for the lids. And because we're making a toothbrush holder, we're not gonna have a lid on it. And so I take and I spray some of this onto a paper plate and I get a paintbrush and I take and I paint around the top where you would screw the cap on just so it will match the soap dispenser with the top and you can't really tell this probably needs another coat on top but you want to do that if you're gonna do it before you seal it so that way it's sealed in as well and then what you want to do is you want to take your spout that we made in an earlier video with repurposing our soft soap empty container and spout I will put the link below you want to take and you want to spray paint and primer your spout. And just a little trick of what I do is I take a handy Walmart bag, I take my trusty Starbucks jar, because I have so many of them, I put my jar inside the bag, to the bottom of the bag, and I poke a hole in the top of it, and I stick my spout in there before I paint it. And this is how I spray paint my spout. I also do the lid the same way. I take the, the neck and the lid 
and I put it on a Starbucks jar and I just spray it so that way you don't have that little line that goes around there from setting it down on the newspaper and doing it around the newspaper. This works really well. So then what we're going to do is you're going to take your lid and your spout net and you're going to take your dispenser and you're just going to put them together now. It's time to finally put your work together and screw it on there. It's nice and screwed on. Look at that. Super cute. And it is ready to go on your jar that you didn't paint the neck on. So this is going to be your soap dispenser. Look at that. Isn't that just adorable? Super cute. And it really doesn't cost much money. I mean, if you've already got the spray paint at home, it just takes a little bit of time. And here you go. There's your toothbrush holder and your soap dispenser. So go ahead and seal them. I hope you guys all liked this video. I hope that you love these as much as I do. If you liked my video, like it please, and subscribe to my channel please, because I can use all the subscribers that I can get. And I promise you more videos to come. And until then, I will see you next time. Have a good day.